Hiya. I'm going to consolidate some thoughts today on the Spyderco Chef's Knife. We recently moved up in the Chef's Knife game to something that wasn't complete trash and um, got a knife that actually costs a little bit of money and made of pretty decent materials. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm probably a bit off base there because our previous knife was, um, I guess we did that last time. We went from always having those like um, home brand or just store-bought uh, kitchen knives, um, like Maxwell Williams and those sorts of brands. Um, we went to Victorinox last time, so this was about three years ago or so. We got this Victorinox came in this sort of bamboo block here uh, with, with a few other like um, serrated knife, long skinny knife, little kind of pairing knife. Um, we got this a few years ago um, and you know, it did okay. It's still very, these are still kind of like very much on the lower end, uh, really, when you can when you think about like materials and that sort of thing. And there's a psychology to your kitchen knife. It's a really weird thing. Of all the blades you use, it's probably probably 70% of all cutting tasks in the home are done with a kitchen knife. Most things we cut with food. Uh, and frankly, um, if you've got non-knife people in your house, these knives are probably doing a lot more than just food cutting as well. They're going to be cutting, you know, the labels of clothes when they bring them in and all that stuff. These get flogged. And this one has been flogged pretty badly. Um, you know, it's done well. It's um, like a really good basic knife. I would say if you're looking at getting a, a sort of slightly better than store-bought and you want something that's like a, a proper brand and you know made of a slightly better steel these are a great place to start they're about 50 bucks i think this whole kit was about 130 dollars or something like that for all the knives so it was a good good setup um but still very much basic and still made for people who probably aren't gonna meticulously care for their blade um and that's what you sort of have to start doing once you move up in the world to you know more um uh, specialized bits of kit. So yeah, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her a bit of a uh, first instance review of this uh, Spyderco chef's knife. Um, kitchen knives generally are more of a long-term thing, but I've already had a few people asking, hey, what do you think of the uh, chef's knife? And I've said, well, you know, I, I can certainly put some thoughts uh, on paper now. So what we're going to do, we're going to take it down to the, um, the cutting board top. I'm going to have a bit of a natter about the Spyderco chef's knife. So stay with me. All right, so here are our two knives. Now this review is gonna be interspersed with a lot of use footage because this has already had a lot of use. Uh, so this is our previous, this is our Victorinox Ferox. Um, both are about the same size as in the seven inch cutting edge blades, um, which is what both of them have. This one is a lot thinner and you'll find a lot of your more basic um, chef's knives that are made for people who frankly don't care are gonna be a fair bit thinner because this thinness, it gets you a lot of mileage when you don't particularly keep your edge maintained or care about the sharpness of your knife or have, you know, most people don't have any means of sharpening a knife. They literally use their knives until they're blunt, use them for another year and then throw them away and get new sharp knives. That's how a lot of people uh, deal. Like I do a bit of knife sharpening for friends and most of them say, you know what, we would have just got new ones, like new, new $30 knives um, once we got absolutely sick of how dull these ones were. But that is how reality is most people use their kitchen knives. Um, and this one is kind of still made for those kind of people because they're very, very thin. So the thinness will still do a lot of your slicing even when the edge is doing very little of that slicing. You've still got a thin sort of bit of you know, decent shaped metal to put through your food type materials. No worries at all. This one's still moderately sharp. I do keep these sharp enough on the work sharp, um, which is you know just fine for such a thin little stock of knife, really thin behind the edge. Pretty well ground for slicing, you know, no problems at all. Um, very standard plastic, um, just polymer handle. Um, you can chuck these in the dishwasher. Um, I wouldn't recommend dishwashing knives. You're not really supposed to, but it happens. If you've got people in your house who don't care, it, it happens. And it's just one of those things. Just like how um, your wife might, my wife will buy really nice fancy clothes every now and then I'll wash them the wrong way and she'll be a bit like, ah oh, man, don't wash them like that. That can, you know, that shortens the life of this, this or that. It's the same thing. You can't expect everyone to care. You just can't. Like, it's just not how people work. So anyway, moving on to this one. This is a knife that, and again, it's that psychology. You get a knife like this, you start to kind of care a little bit. You, it, it does help. It helps having put a little bit more of an investment into it. And having something that seems a bit nicer, you'll probably find you do start taking care of it a bit more. So this isn't something you'd be wanting to put in a dishwasher, for example. Just on that, 
uh, dishwashing uh, knives. Yeah, if there's a wooden handle, just don't ever. This is um, Corian handle. So Corian is like a polymer mixed with um, some aluminium ox type materials made for um, really construction plastic. So it's like a construction material, often used in bench, bench tops and things like that. Um, really, really super hard and super strong stuff. So uh, good knife handle material, won't warp or change under heat or duress or anything like that, but still the, the basic fact is with the dishwasher. Dishwashing powder tablets make a slightly abrasive slurry mixture that can shorten the edge life of a lot of knives and it does sort of round over things and almost kind of polish things away a little bit uh, quite aggressively. Also the tablets can sometimes be a little bit acidic uh, opening the pores up for rust and that sort of thing. The heat is fine, like to change a knife's heat treat, you need more than sort of the bit of boiling water that you blast them in the dishwasher. It's not that, it's, and I've, I've, I have done a bit of looking into this because people do ask. Uh, it isn't that at all, it's just um, the actual tablets themselves aren't great. And also the dishes banging into each other, cups falling over it, things moving about in the dishwasher a bit, just not so great for the surface and for the edge of knives. So just that, so anyway. You get, this is going to be one you're going to be washing and toweling dry. And if this is the first knife you've had like that, then it's a kind of a good primer for that. Um, when you look at pocket knives, and this is the thing, I'm a pocket knife reviewer, I'm not a kitchen knife reviewer, so I kind of probably liken back to the same concepts. Um, when you look at pocket knives, there's kind of like, there's people who have those like little box cutter pocket knives, they'll have, you know, junk brand Chinese Winchester pocket knives, um, and they're kind of the equivalent of the real sort of bargain basement kitchen knives that you get. Then you get stuff like this. This is like maybe in a scale sense, maybe a bit like a um, like a Leatherman Crater, kind of like a real basic um, pocket knife that's still made by a decent enough brand with a bit more purpose to it. And then this really, a knife that I often use, also made by Spyderco, is a bit like the Spyderco Delica. So both of these are good entry levels into the really nicer, nicer aspects of your um, of your pursuit here. So kitchen knives. Um, there are a lot nicer kitchen knives out there than this. The, absolutely. There is, this one's ground well and has good materials. Um, a bit like the Delica, it's ground well, has good materials, does the pocket knife thing really well. You'll be able to get stuff that blows this out of the water, without a doubt. You'll pay a fair bit more for it, but this is kind of like the, the basic template for a, you know, for a slightly higher care kitchen knife. So yeah, what do you get for this one? Corian handle, as I said, and VG10 being the steel. Now, Spyderco make a range of kitchen knives before these chef ones came out and cook knives. Before the Corian handle ones came out, which is the cook's knife and the chef's knife, they did have a Santoku and sort of a few other like utility block knives and they were in MN26 steel. Now, MN26 steel is a bit of a precursor to VG10, similar carbon amounts. Uh, still a stainless steel, um, but less of the, just less other sort of elements like uh, 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 cobalt and things like that, that VG10 does have that just gives a little bit extra edge holding performance. So um, these are a little bit of a step up in materials from Spyderco's existing line. And the handles are definitely nicer seeming, like they're less plasticky. That feels like a real high, quite a high quality material. Um, Nice, very nice material. And then just cutlers, cutlery pins in, just holding them together. Slight bump to them, but actually quite nice and very nicely finished overall. Very well fit and finished blade. There's no, no, no seams or anything like that along here. Um, very well done indeed. So yeah, um, in terms of slicing performance, well, it slices excellently. Like you definitely notice the difference. And that is due to two things. A, the blade has a nice height to it and they've heightened out the entire blade. Yeah, this knife, this portion of most kitchen knives will be high and sliced like crazy. Often by this point, things are starting to narrow down a little bit. Um, whereas what they've done here, they've added this slight extra bit of height here uh, to make it, you know, even just a few more millimeters taller. It gives that slightly thicker than usual stock time to thin out to a really fine edge. Um, slightly thicker stock, it's 2.5 millimeters. Still not thick by any sense, but about the same as like the Spyderco Delica pocket knife is at its thickest point. Um, comparatively to that, this is probably about, you know, this would be about 1.75 millimeters thick. Like it's quite thin indeed, and it has a fair bit of stretch and uh, sort of flex and bounce to it. Different strokes for different folks. As I said, these are done for folks who just want a thin piece of metal to push through things. This is for people who want to take care of a good kitchen knife and get a long time of use out of it by keeping it very sharp. So there you go. So yeah, it does slice really, really well in its peak um, sharpness and 
you know, in its optimum conditions, slices excellently. Uh, the ergonomics are very, very comfortable. The handle has just enough squareness um, to form like a nice satisfying ledge for this part of your finger here. Um, and yeah, no problems at all. Just a nice basic kitchen knife handle. Really, really good. Uh, lots of space, any, any size hand could use this kitchen knife really, really well. It's very, very much just a crowd pleasing handle, shape, size, etc. Really, really well done indeed. And we've really enjoyed, me and Trey have really enjoyed using it and really enjoyed sort of stepping up into that next level of kitchen knives, I guess. What's higher than this? Well, you're gonna get things like, you could get one in LC200N from a custom maker or something like that. Uh, Gary Creeley will make you an LC200N uh, kitchen knife, for example. Uh, Forrest Tinsel will make you, like custom makers will make you a really nice kitchen knife. Cost you heaps more money. That's what you gotta realize. So this is $150 um, US, which is a lot of money, like it is. Thinking on that though, it's VG10, which yeah, isn't the world's best pocket knife still, but as a kitchen knife still, it's actually very, very good. It's against, when you're using it against nothing but soft foods and foodstuffs and things, this edge is gonna last you a good long time. Then you've got a sheer amount of it as well. So overall, this is a 12 inch long, that's almost 13 inch long piece, um, seven inches of it, ground precisely into a full flat grind blade, um, which is no easy feat. Ask a custom maker how much extra one of their kitchen knives will cost and the price will double. The sheer effort it takes to grind one of these out, it is significant. It's, um, it's up there. And I know no Spyderco in Japan obviously have machines that do that, but it's just a lot of stock removal. It's a lot of stock, it's managing different, the costs are there and I can see them and I can appreciate it. Um, I certainly can, plus it's full tang. It's, it's a strong overall build. Um, so really, compared to, you'll spend that on a bushcraft knife, no worries at all. Uh, you'll spend that on a smaller Spyderco fixed blade in VG10, like the Bill Moran's the same price, and it's a lot less material. Probably, you know, less, um, less durable even, and less, um, you know, less ready to be used all day kind of thing as well. So I definitely see the price and value here, even though it is VG10. But yeah, your better knives, yeah, they'll come in better steels. You'll start getting laminates, which will need more require, more um, maintenance requirements because you have pretty much an edge that will of, often cases be a carbon steel, um, like a Japanese white steel or blue steel or something like that. Yeah, they'll last longer than VG10 on the edge, but you'll find the edge will eventually patina and this part of the knife here will be a steel such as this. Um, so yeah, there is definitely a lot of movement up in the pursuit as well. Just like how you can start with a Delica and end up with a Spidey Chef or with a you know, Benchmade 940 or something like that. This is going to do all you need great and it's going to do a really good job of showing you where knives can go from here. So, and I, I dare say this knife might be a, a, similar, a similar kind of purpose and similar feeling uh, to, to what the Delica maybe does for the pocket knife world. So yeah, um, has this got me hooked on kitchen knives? Not at all. Like this is just the one that I'm gonna stick with. I probably will grab the cook's knife, the serrated version, um, and maybe even the smaller cook's knife just to use as kitchen utility. It's funny what it's done though. It's definitely, we found, but we found ourselves yep, stopping, washing it off, toweling it off. It takes an extra few seconds, just not chucking in the dishwasher, taking a bit more care, and then in response, it's therefore caring for us a, a bit more as well. I've just been hitting it on a strop, keeping the factory edge as it is. The factory edge came really nice and tall and thin behind the edge. Really well ground kitchen knife, absolutely. Um, and it's just slices like crazy, and it still does after a couple of weeks. There's no deterioration in edge performance. In terms of what we don't like about the blade, um, well, to be honest, I know it's part of their philosophy and their uh, the, the hole just doesn't need to be on a kitchen knife. Uh, you cut cake, things will get stuck in this and I don't appreciate that. I, I just don't think it's worth, I would have been fine just with the spider or with just a lasered in black circle or something like that, just to keep the, um, you know, the motor fair enough, yeah, whatever, but um, an actual hole I don't think is particularly well placed on a kitchen knife. Um, it doesn't serve a purpose, it's just a aesthetic thing and I hope something we could have done without. The only other thing, and this is just a complete, um, something I've just, just found along the way that just causes me mild annoyance, uh, this is really, really sharp here. And it's not, it doesn't matter from a use point of view, your finger's never there, it's fine, like it's, you know, you'd have to like actually try and find it with your finger. It's when you're toweling it off, um, you're 
tea towel snares on this all the time. And that's just um, something that's just of mild annoyance to me. Um, I wouldn't have minded if they just rounded it off and I might even end up just quickly getting the work sharp even and just something and just hitting it for a split second, taking off that absolute pokey corner there. Um, it's the product of a really well ground knife, absolutely. It's it's fine, but it's just something that um, yeah I would suggest doing and just keeping aware, being you know, aware of. But it's it's nothing. It really is nothing. Um, I'm really really happy with this knife. It gets you that significant boost in edge retention and construction quality um, that the money, the money sort of is is spent on. It's it's the the value is there definitely. Um, the steel is going to perform really well against food and of course it's VG10 so you know what if you have to open a box every now and then if someone it's not going to be the end of the world if someone in your house who isn't a knife person uses this for a utility kind of kind of job you know opening up the packet of something whatever it's VG10 so it's going to do fine it serves us just fine in pocket knives you yeah, absolutely um, there are steels that are a much higher end than this that you know I mean custom makers as I said will make you a, a kitchen knife and whatever you want as long as you're happy to pay the price. This is great for seeing if you want to graduate past these sorts of things which are serviceable but just don't have the you know the, quite the amount of um, not prestige, provenance, uh, there's a lot of wanky terms you could use but um, just moving up past you know your more disposable type kitchen knives this is a great place to start and I really do recommend. Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope I've done okay. I'm really not a kitchen knife reviewer. Um, those are just my initial thoughts. I will follow up on this knife because I think it is worth the, um, the extra few comments. Um, just a few size comparisons. That's next to the Spidey Chef. You know, this is it next to the Benchmade 940. Next to the Paramilitary 2. It's, um, you know, it's a kitchen knife. <laughs> what can you say? Um, yeah. And of course, the little spider K delicate. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope you've seen us, uh, enjoyed seeing us use and um, enjoy this knife. And I'll see you all in the next video, guys. Bye now.